Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look at a retro inspired RPG that I was really excited for with Sea of Stars. Before we start, I would like to thank everyone who has subscribed to my channel and hope you enjoy my content I provide. I'm trying to hit that plateau of 1,000 subs, so please like and subscribe if you like what I do. Looking back at some of my fondest memories for RPGs were on the classic consoles like the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis to the Sega City in a 16-bit era. Boy were those great times with the likes of Final Fantasy 3 for the Super NES, Fantasy Star 4 on my Sega Genesis, and of course Lunar 2 Eternal Blue on the Sega CD were some of my favorite games of all time. One game I missed and is still in my Steam collection and I plan on playing one day was Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo, which is one of the games that inspired Sea of Stars. Sea of Stars was developed and released by Sabotage Studios for Windows PC, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and the Xbox Series X and S in 2023. Starting out as a Kickstarter in 2020, the game is from the same setting as other released game, The Messenger, which I also had a blast in playing. The story is set thousands of years before the events of The Messenger and stars two protagonists that you get to select named Valerie and Zale, who are raised to be solstice warriors whose main mission is to protect the world from evils called the Dwellers. The story is told in a text and in some animated cutscenes, and they do impress. As the story progresses, as the two warriors set out in defeating a dweller, the story drastically expands to saving the world like all RPGs tend to do, and with surprises along the way that starts slow but really ramps up further along when you play. This is a 25 to 30 hour adventure. The battle system here is really what drew me in. It is very innovative that keeps you engaged throughout every battle and very intuitive in mastery. You are able to take less damage and increasing more damage with timed button presses on your own attacks with enemies attacking you as well. You will anticipate enemy animation and attack patterns in order to survive. You are allowed three characters to fight at one time, but are able to swap between multiple characters that you meet along the way for even more strategic battles. You will need to really use the characters as best as possible to survive and every battle seems to be tough in its own right where if you don't use the correct tactics you can easily be defeated by normal enemies. I do believe that the normal enemies are harder battles in general than the boss fights although learning how to fight the bosses are fun in figuring out. The puzzles in dungeons are not hard to figure out, but very intuitive once you obtain different skill sets. This is basically the meat of the game as each dungeon is very unique and different. I had a lot of fun using different techniques in solving puzzles and using same skills in getting an advanced attack on enemies was really a nice touch. I just wish the attention and detail of the world and dungeons was implemented into the characters and writing a little bit more. Leveling up was different as well as the experience earned was for the entire party as a whole. And when you do level up, the entire party levels up together and you are able to select stats on how you would like each character improves forging them in a character you would like to use differently in battle. The visuals are retro pixelated similar to the classic 16-bit era and is done beautifully. What a fantastic presentation that grabbed me into this world. The design is very well done and I have never really found a problem here as I 
played throughout the game as it wowed me every step of the way. Those boss fights are large and animated so well, I wanted and wondered how the next event would impress me even more, and the game did deliver. The soundtrack shines as well, with some tracks reminiscent to older generations to the modern fantasy symphonic choices that really went well with the world design as a whole. There was a section where the band would play music and I would just jam through the, playing the tracks you collect as music sheets on your journey. A very nice addition. Overall, the game surprised the hell out of me. From its fantastic battle system that keeps you engaged and stressing if you will survive virtually every contest. The weakest portion of the game is the writing and story overall that does start slow but does pick up more as you play. Sea of Stars gets an 8.0 out of 10 for its wonderful world design and addictive intuitive battle system that really keeps you on edge that only falters with its simple story and characters on saving the world. That's it for this review on Sea of Stars. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and Greg take us out of here and I will see you all next upload. Yeah.